What kind of things do you want to do? Go dig, drink some wine and drink some coffee and eat some good food and go for a little run maybe and go uh, maybe get in some water if there's water. I would definitely eat in some water. And dog walk and have no agenda and not be stressed. Perfect. Let's get to it. Let's get to it and not be stressed. Come on, bud. Let's go. This is the continuation of a story of a trip with no plan. As an injured professional athlete, missing my world championships, I needed a trip to take my mind elsewhere. My fiance, Paula, had just finished and won what it was supposed to be her last race of the season and flown to meet me on my West Coast walkabout. I've always been torn between my desire to create beautiful visual stories and to actually live my story, making a living as an athlete something I dreamed of my entire life. As we headed into the off season, when the weather turns too cold to race triathlon, I was feeling as creative and happy as I had in a very long time. But I could tell Paula wasn't quite as checked out from training as I was. Nailed it. What? Is it at zero? Yeah. I don't want it to be at zero, bud. Perfect amount. Because if it's at zero, you can't have a shower. Well, maybe you'll get a little bit out of that zero. Yeah, I had a shower actually before when it was at zero. Let's pack up. Let's feed the dog and pack up. After a good night's sleep at a secret spot, we found a map of wine country and set off to find a coffee shop that came highly recommended and a winery with similar rave reviews from our friend Samantha, who grew up in Healdsburg just a few miles away. We were struck by how nice the roads were in Napa Valley and feel like we could definitely head back there for a training camp. What? <laughs> Celebrating your friendship. <laughs> It might sound strange, but as much as we feel like we need space from the sport at times, even as we're on break, we're evaluating place based on what it has to offer from a swim, bike, run perspective. Even when we're off, we're thinking about what we do for work. And to me, that's literally living the dream. After a full day of driving along the coast, we followed the 101 inland to check out the Redwoods National Park. Paula went for a run and I tested my knee with another easy ride, but it was raining so much, the cameras had to stay in the van. If you haven't made it to the Redwoods, I can't recommend it enough. 
It's impossible to leave without feeling the deepest appreciation for Mother Nature and the need to preserve it. Angry flip of hair Another deadly stare Close but still so far Touching your arm, trying to find your heart As we rolled out and followed the highway back towards the coast, I felt fortunate to be in the presence of these giant trees. It's crazy how something so big can be tucked away into such a small corner of the country. And just like the Yosemite Valley, I wonder what it would have been like to be the first person to stumble across a tree 400 feet tall. As we approached Oregon, the temperatures continued to drop and the coastline became progressively more moody and the towns increasingly kitschy. If you've ever been to the Oregon coast, you know exactly what I mean. It's got a completely unique vibe and I love it. The way you look at me When you see that it's me you see I'm riding down your street After one more night in the van, we finally pointed straight east and into the Oregon coast range of mountains. As we finished up the drive, Paula confessed to me that she had signed up for another race in four weeks. While I was finally starting to feel like my body would allow me to exercise, full training was something I thought was months away. But the idea of showing the fitness I built for Xterra World Championships was very enticing. We'll pick that up next time. Your touch blows me apart.